Welcome to another Programming Exam Solution tutorial for the 2015 COMP1 exam. Today we're going to be looking at the getMove function, some of the problems and solutions around that particular function. Um, so, the real problem is that uh, it's not validated. If you type in a character or don't type in anything, then the whole thing crashes and you start the game again, drives you potty. Um, so we need to work in a type present to check. The other thing is that if you put in a 9 or a 0, then, well, a 9 you'll get an out of range exception, and a 0 you will get, well, I suppose it will still be picked up from not a valid move. Um, but it's it'd still be nice to have it sort of sorted out right at the uh, at the outset. So um, that's one thing we're going to do today. The second thing that we're going to do is just have a look at different ways we could change the input methodology. I'll be honest with you, I don't think there'll be a chess style notation. Um, but I think the idea that we might have a four digit integer, that is, that is actually quite likely. So let's have a little look at the basic strategy for how we're going to sort the validation out. Type and present check, you're going to use a try catch. And then we're going to use if statements um, within a loop to assess each digit. Um, we're going to be using the modern diff function similar to the uh, way in which start square, uh, start rank and start file are extracted. Let's have a little file, uh, look at this. So this is my completed solution. Let's have a quick chat through it. Um, the way I always do validation is I create a boolean and set it to false. And then I create a do loop. Oops. I create a do loop with valid input being the exit criteria for the do loop. So as long as there's nothing in my code to uh, make that boolean be assigned true, uh, it will just keep going. Okay, so for this particular one we're keeping it really simple. I've got the two inputs there. I of course could separate this out and have two separate do loops, but I'm just going to have the two inputs of start square and finish square. And then I've got this, it's not that monster, but I've got this fairly sizable uh, Boolean statement. And I kind of advise you to really, oops, zoom out a bit, uh, to really, 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 really make sure that you've got your head uh, around this. If you're not 100% sure how mod and div works, um, then you need to be. I really like this particular formatting option in uh, Visual Basic where by you uh, use underscores to basically move to a new line but keeping within the same command and I've laid it out like this so that all of these statements have to be true in order for the valid input to be true. So start square mod 10 effectively um, takes the second digit of the start square uh, and here I'm checking it for 0 or 9. Start square div 10, so that's the first digit of the start square, and I'd do the same way. There must be about a dozen ways of um, sorting this out. Anything from regex to doing a range and then narrowing it down. I've just gone for a really, really simple, and crucially, I've gone for the same methodology as they've used to extract the rank and file in the main program. So that's the reason why I chose that way of doing it. You may have your own way of doing it, that's fine, but uh, that's how I wanted to do it. <coughs> so that is a little, that element there is effectively checking if the two digits of both the start and the finish input are not naught and they're not nine and as long as not they're not that it will actually um, set the valid inputs true i'm always belt and braces i always put an else with valid input equals false just safe and i've given it a little user dialogue as well 
Obviously that doesn't work if someone types wibble or there's absolutely nothing, just hits enter. So we've stuck all of that within a try catch. And there again, in the exception part of the try catch, I've given a error message and another valid input equals false, just to be sure. Make sure you are really, really, really comfortable with um, this. I've no idea whether they'll do it for this or get move, but uh, not get move, uh, get game type, but it's likely that there will be some validation. There tends to be a validation question. This seems quite a nice one, but you never know. So now let's have a little look at um, if we wanted to have a single input. So for me, it's a little bit of a faff to be having to type in uh, start square, finish square as two separate inputs. Just have one input, one four digit integer. So if I wanted to go from uh, one seven to one six, I'll just go one seven, one six, job done. Uh, that's now going to be effectively um, a number in the thousands. So the first two digits will be uh, extracted by div 100 and the last two digits can be extracted by model 100. Again, if you want to try this out, just type, just play around with it in Excel. Um, mod works in Excel. Um, div, uh, it's called quote, quotient. Um, yeah, so if you use the mod function and the quotient function, mod is mod and div is quotient in Excel. Or you could just, you know, play around in VB and just try different uh, hard coded um, hard coded things just to the console just to play around with it. So let's have a look at uh, my solution for how I would do the single input. So I've kept all of the validation the same. The only thing I've done is I've created a another variable to act as like a temporary to hold the move which is what I'm calling the combination of start square and finish square. I've decided that I'm not going to do anything else with the parameters. I still want to pass back start square and finish square just because the rest of the program works really well. So it's these two lines here. Start square, move div 100. Finish square, move mod 100. Now I've got those two assigned. All the rest of my validation works treat. And um, everything is absolutely uncontrolled. Obviously I've had to change the um, the user input and I've got rid of one of the assignment statements but hopefully you can see that's actually a really really simple uh, really 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 simple question that could be asked that could be answered really simply but it is in the spec that you need to know what modern div operators um, do and that you can use modular arithmetic and this seems to be set up for it in the exam. I really really hope that uh, you uh, found this video useful. If you've got any questions please feel free to ask me in the, the, uh, in the comments below. If you've got any positive feedback or negative feedback let me know um, and I am more than happy to take it on board. hope you've enjoyed it and uh, hope you're revising hard for the exam.